everyone, we're Mega Morgs. We've just spent the past nine months backpacking our way through Southeast Asia. So we have sat down, wrote a list of all of our favourite activities, and we're going to be sharing with you our top 25 activities from nine months in Southeast Asia. We'll get straight into it with number 25, the bamboo train in Batambang in Cambodia. We'd heard about this experience and seen a couple of reels on Instagram and it looked like a really fun way to spend an hour or so um, when we were in Batambang and it really lived up to its expectations. It cost us $5 and the money was well spent. It was one of the more sort of like expensive activities that you could do in the area, but absolutely well worth it. And just, it was just really fun, yeah. And also like it taught you a lot about the sort of history and yeah. the local people, you know, they sort of found scrap materials and came up with this way of transporting people and goods around the court around the country in a difficult time um so it was really enjoyable and we got to see some of the beautiful cambodian countryside so what's not to like in 24th place is the duck stop in phong nha in vietnam this was hilarious also it was pretty cheap i yeah, think it was, it was... 100,000 um, vietnamese dong which is just over three pounds like three pounds 33 or something like that that's per person but it yeah. also came with a vietnamese pancake which was made fresh a soft drink and also some snacks before the activity itself um so it's such an affordable activity it was absolutely hilarious i don't think we stopped laughing <laughs> once good. and it's run by a really sweet wholesome family just on their little farm so definitely recommend the stop coming in at number 23 is the namze viewpoint hike in vang Vieng lao this is probably one of the more iconic viewpoint hikes across southeast asia and it was yeah not the best weather for us we had a lot of rain on the way down and meg got particularly muddy yeah but um it was an amazing view and one of the more iconic places to sit on top of the motorbike and wave the the Laotian flag it was a really nice way to spend sort of like a couple of hours it doesn't take too long either i think in no. total it probably took us like around 45 minutes to get to the top yeah but it is steep it's slippery hot humid and there's lots of mosquitoes oh, so terrible. just prepare for the situation i think it was probably worse for us because we were there in rainy season um, but saying that it was still so worth the trek coming in at number 22 is the trang an boat ride in ninh bin i think this was one of our favorite stops in vietnam it's just so beautiful it cost us 200,000 per person um, but you did have to have four people for the boat, so we just joined up with another couple of backpackers that we met. Um, but there's three different routes to choose from. We chose the one with lots of caves, lots of stops at different sort of like pagodas all around. It's stunning, um, definitely a must do for your time in Vietnam. Make sure to tip your um, yeah. your boat driver because they they're literally propelling you just in that heat themselves. weather as well an additional tip for that is do the trang an boat ride rather than the tam Kok one the tam Kok one is supposed to be a bit dodgy with like forced tips yeah. and yeah it wasn't sort of the best reviewed so go for the trang an rather than the tam Kok. next up at number 21 is kayaking in kampot now kampot i wouldn't say is on the major sort of backpacker route in cambodia as well as many of the other places that we went to but we went down to this place called Champa Lodge, um, rented some kayaks for I think like three dollars each or something like that. Took them out for about an hour and a half around these sort of like beautiful river channels, getting completely lost. But eventually, thanks to the help of some local people, <laughs> finding our way back and then just sort of having a, a sit down and some lunch in the little cafe that they've got there. We'd really recommend it if you get down to Kampot in Cambodia, it's easy to access if you're sort of going off to sort of Koh Rong and think places like that down on the south coast. Okay, so in place 20 was the silver ring making class that we did in Siddham and Bali. We're both actually wearing our rings <laughs> now, um, but this was also a really wholesome experience. You know, it was sort of like a local workshop run by a family. The young daughter was like practicing her English with us. Um, but we got to personalise, choose the design, um, and it's a souvenir, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space in your bag. You can make exactly how you want it to be. You can engrave it. I just highly, highly recommend. The reason we opted to do it in Sidamon is because it is a cheaper experience than in the more touristy area of Ubud. We paid around 300,000 
Indonesian rupiah, which is around £15. And number 19 is the amazing day that we spent with a couple of friends at the Tumpak Sawu waterfall. Um, we started the day pretty early, took the two and a half or so hour drive from Malang over to Tumpak Sawu and um, had a walk through the jungle to the viewpoint. The journey to get there to the viewpoint wasn't as straightforward as what we might have expected as there was some bridge damage that they were repairing. So we had to take this crazy motorbike ride through the jungle with some local guys who didn't really speak any English um, to the start point. We then also negotiated with these guys to go to a bit further, sort of to a, uh, an additional viewpoint cafe where Megan and I sat and had a drink with some views of like a active volcano with a big waterfall in front of it. It was just generally like a really amazing day that we spent interacting with local people, hanging out with them, as well as seeing some of the more beautiful and also countryside areas of um, East Java. And Tumpak Sui waterfall itself is just absolutely stunning. You know, if you get to see it on a clear day, it probably will be one of the most beautiful waterfalls that you have ever seen. Okay, so number 18, this is the canyoneering day that we spent in Mobile in the Philippines. This was so far out of our comfort <laughs> zone and we absolutely loved it. It's such a hilarious experience, you know, flinging yourself off different platforms into the water, which is absolutely freezing. Um, we were in a group setting, which I think helped because you maybe had a bit of peer pressure to yeah. get you over the edge if you weren't sure. Well, that did help. Um, but yeah, beautiful waterfalls all the way down. It rained, which added to the experience. Um, and then we had lunch at the end. Just an overall great day. And number 17 is the boat trip that we did in Koh Yao Noi with Megan's parents. Now for Thailand, obviously your expectations are high and this boat trip really didn't disappoint. We went to a number of different beautiful islands and um, we had some good weather as well, a little bit of rain here and there, but we were visiting in the wet season. Just overall a really nice day with a mixture of, you know, um, beautiful beaches, the landscape, some snorkeling. We just had a great time and it was a perfect advocate for how good Thailand is to travel. In number 16 was our favourite hike from our time in Laos and this is up in the countryside region of Nong Kior, not far from Luang Prabang. We absolutely loved it. Again, we were there in rainy season um, so it was a lot more slippery than what it probably usually is. We did the sleeping lady hike. Um, we had to pay a very, very small entry fee. Yeah. Wasn't much at all. But the views over the river and over the village below are just, they're insane. Yeah. It really is such a stunning region in Laos. And it's not very touristy at all. So that was definitely one of our favorite experiences. And number 15 is the day that we spent doing a safari in Yala National Park in Sri Lanka. The day safari cost us $50 and we were picked up very early in the morning, I think about four o'clock in yeah. the dark. Then we made our way over to the National Park entry point where um, all the Jeeps were sort of queuing up. It turned into a bit of like a Mad Max road race um, with people trying to find leopards at the very beginning but it was a lot less busy than what we'd seen um, in the past before sort of the COVID times and obviously the political struggles that had been on in Sri Lanka. But we saw some amazing wildlife. Unfortunately, no leopards, but some footprints. And um, yeah, we just had a really great time. It was fun. We had, um, you know, some nice food as well. He made us breakfast. Yeah. And then we were back, I think, sometime in the, in the early afternoon. You can also do a full day safari I think we did a half day, which was $50, and I think the full day was probably 75 Yeah. Um, the leopards are most active in the mornings and sort of like late afternoons. So if you do a full day, then you might have a chance to see them in the evening. Um, we opted for the uh, morning just because, um, well, we're on a budget and $50 was quite an expensive experience, but we don't regret doing it. There's also a number of other different national parks um, in Sri Lanka that are a lot cheaper and probably a lot less touristy. Um, so just have a look at them really and see which one works best for you because um, Yala is kind of expensive but gives you the best chance to, to see a leopard. But um, there's a variety of other ones that might be better suited to you. I think if we went back personally, we would go to Udawalaway. Like Morgan said, we were in Sri Lanka in a time when tour tourism wasn't fully returned to the country. So the park didn't seem too busy at all um, but yeah I think if we went back we would go to one of the less touristy national parks. Number 14 is 
visiting Mount Bromo for sunrise in East Java. Again, such a stunning, surreal experience. I'd say as well that this activity is open to all sort of fitness levels because you get a Jeep pretty much to the base of where you watch the sun come up and then you can choose to hike a bit more to a good viewpoint or not. The experience cost us about £30 and was well worth every penny and is more than made up for for the fact that East Java is an extremely affordable destination to travel. Next up at number 13 is our day that we spent exploring Angkor Wat. Now because we went in the rainy season we didn't go for the sunrise and we were sort of very pleased that we didn't because there wasn't much of a sunrise that day. We would recommend going early, but um, maybe around sort of like seven o'clock would be a good time. It means that you don't have to get up too early and all the people that are crowding around for sunrise, um, you know, they've sort of cleared out by then and then you can sort of go at your own pace and leisure without the huge crowds. We had a lovely time. It was expensive, obviously, costing $37 for the day, but um, we really had a great time and we had our little tour guide called um, Mr. Dara. He took us around to all the best spots and then came and picked us up in different places. And also, obviously we had to pay additional for the private driver, but every time we got back to him, he had like frozen towels for <laughs> us to cool down, cold water, and then he also got us a coconut. So in our opinion, well worth the extra $20 we paid for a private driver. Number 12 is driving the high van past the stunning coastal road near Da Nang in Vietnam. So it sort of runs between Hue and Da Nang. People often opt to just drive it one way and then if they go through a company, you can sort of ship your bag to the other side. Um, we decided to rent bikes for the day in Da Nang and we drove the pass both ways, which was amazing. We got to see things going both ways that we hadn't the first time. Um, we had lunch in sort of like a local restaurant. There's cafes on the way, so we stopped for a drink overlooking. Beautiful beaches, which you probably wouldn't yeah. link to Vietnam. Um, honestly, the driving was fine. The most chaotic part of the day was getting in and out of the city itself, but other than that, we had no issues. In number 11 is the following giant elephant sanctuary that myself and my mum visited in Koh Lanta, Thailand. This was one of the most wholesome days. We opted for the two hour experience, but in all honesty, we had most of the morning there. Um, it was slightly pricey, but so worth it knowing that your money is going to a company who actually cares about the animals rather than the profits. There's no sort of touching, bathing, feeding. You simply just follow these beautiful creatures, eating and bathing, doing what they want through the forest. And it was just magical. At number 10 is the Caron boat trip in the Philippines. Now this was even better than the one that everybody raves about in El Nido. Yeah. People say about the A and C combo tour in El Nido and say that's the best, but we thought that the Caron ultimate tour that we went on was even better. Um, less touristy than El Nido, but just generally I think it just was you know, a bit more pristine. We just had a really great day, really. Probably a combination of the amazing food that we had, the really fun sort of like boat crew that were looking after us as well. And the spots I thought were just incredible. We had lunch sort of like on a secluded private beach. And if you've been to the Philippines, you know that they do a beach barbecue very, <laughs> very well. So lunch in itself was a great experience, but honestly, the whole day was amazing. You've got beautiful sort of like karstic mountains overlooking crystal clear water. The snorkeling was great. Highly, highly recommend. In number nine is Mount Ijin, again in East Java, Indonesia. As you can tell, we had a great week there, um, but this one was particularly special. We learned a lot more about sort of the work that they do there and with our Indonesian tour guide, we spoke a lot with him and learned a lot. We headed down into the crater itself to see the blue flame. And then once we'd seen that, we headed up to a viewpoint to watch the sun rising over it. And it's a stunning landscape. Next up at number eight is the turtle beach that we visited um, near Unawatuna, Sri Lanka. We just um, hopped on a bus to get outside of the city. I think the bus probably cost us about 10p or something <laughs> there in Sri Lanka. And um, we stopped off at the side of the road, um, followed a sign that said Turtle Beach, and lo and behold, we were snorkeling for turtles for probably the rest of the morning. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. There was also a couple of little restaurants that you can get a lovely sort of 
traditional Sri Lankan lunch, which was like a selection of curries or chicken kottu or whatever you fancy. But we just had a really great day. And I think part of it was the surprise that we didn't really set out to snorkel with these turtles. Um, and also like it's a free experience. Yeah. It's completely natural. They are absolutely huge. They so were. we've done quite <laughs> a lot of snorkeling, but these are the biggest ones that we've ever seen. Um, and it wasn't too touristy at all. In seventh place is the overnight trip that we stayed at in Khao Sok National Park in Thailand. This was probably our favourite thing we did in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. It is absolutely stunning. You stay on these overwater bungalows, so you wake up and you can literally go for a swim on your doorstep. We had free access to kayaks. We did multiple safaris. We also did sort of a jungle trek and then got a bamboo raft to a cave that we explored. Um, just a little bit of everything. The food was great. We were very lucky we had a great group of people and it is beautiful. I think the experience cost us £62 and we were also quite lucky with the weather being um, at the start of rainy season when we visited we had blue skies for the whole time which really added to the experience. At number six is the iconic Taj Mahal in Agra, India. The first wonder of the world that we'd visited together and um, I mean it was just the most amazing thing to see in person. I think some of those things that you think are going to be amazing to see it doesn't quite live up to the expectation but when you sort of look at the Taj Mahal in front of you and the scale and the majesty of the building it was just crazy and made even better by the beautiful sunrise and clear skies that we had on the day. It couldn't have really been a better experience. Also what is crazy is just the difference in the amount of people between when we entered and yeah. when we left. Honestly if you are going to Agra then highly highly recommend that you get in that queue and enter before the gates even open. I think I can remember us setting our alarm for sort of like half past four or something like but that. But it was and so Getting worth into the it. queue for maybe five but there really wasn't was barely anyone there and by the time the gates opened I think there was probably maybe 20 or 30 people and we were like one of the first people to have a photograph which it makes a difference if you're at one of those places and you can have a photograph with no one in the background it was just yeah, makes really it special. it just makes it sort of like morgan said a special but like serene experience just some tips for visiting the taj mahal to make things easy for you as well is get your accommodation to book your tickets online the day before um, and you can get the pass for the mausoleum included in that as well um, and then finally, don't take anything that you don't need with you. If you've taken rucksacks and stuff like that, it's going to sort of like hinder the amount of time yeah. that it takes to get through. Just take your phone and a bottle of water with you. In fifth place is the orangutan sanctuary that we visited in Sepalok, Borneo. We loved it so much that we visited twice. It's so affordable. I think it was around £6 per person to visit. And then they had a morning and an afternoon sort of feed. But it's completely in the jungle, so the orangutans are sort of semi-wild that have maybe grown up in the sanctuary and have been released. And the food's there to support them if they're struggling to find that food on their own. So it's not guaranteed to see any. We were very lucky. We saw quite a few. And honestly, it was just absolutely magical. They yeah. are beautiful creatures. We had even had a few sort of unexpected close encounters with them as well, which was really amazing. And yeah, it was just like a magical experience, like what Meg said. At number four is the trekking and helicopter ride that we took into the Everest Base Camp Trek in um, Nepal. Now, it wasn't exactly the smoothest of rides that Megan and I had hiking through the Himalayas with Megan getting altitude sickness as we went sort of really quite high up, um, just near sort of 5,000 metres. But it didn't sort of dampen the experience looking back. Um, it's definitely some sort of type 2 fun when you look back and you think about how amazing the experience was. But the views and just, yeah, just the experience is, is really amazing and really rewarding. And I think like despite all of the lows, I would still go back and do it all again because the scenery is like nothing I've personally ever seen before. Um, one day we woke up and it snowed all through the night and it was just magical. Yeah, seeing all the snow covered mountains and then when you get your sort of first views of like Mount Everest and Amadablam and all these like iconic mountains that are just absolutely like towering over the landscape, it really is just like nothing you've ever seen before. We are now into the top three. In third place is the multi-day Kinabatangan river safari we did in Malaysian Borneo. 
So this was just incredible. We saw so many different animals. We had the most magical experience. The food was great. Accommodation was great. You know, considering we're in the middle of the jungle. We saw wild orangutans through the binoculars. Um, it was just magical. And especially because we went sort of in the rainy season and also not in the fruiting season, we saw quite a lot um, in comparison. Um, just because in the rainy season you can't see as many crocodiles because the river flows too yeah. strong for them um, and in the fruiting season you're more likely to see I think um, animals like orangutans and elephants and the, the sun bears um, just because there's more fruit available so they'll be a bit more active in order to try to find it but we still had a great time and like Megan said you know everything was great about our experience our hosts were lovely as well and I think the experience um, cost us around like £90 per person yeah. But that was for sort of like a three night trip. Two night, three days. Two night, three day trip, which was really reasonable considering yeah. it had the two two or so hours um, transportation to and from Sepalock included in that. Coming in at number two is the three night, four day Komodo Island boat trip in Indonesia. Now this is probably one of the most iconic things you can do in Southeast Asia. This trip and the views really did live up to the hype. Um, we paid 190-ish pounds per person and it was well worth it and you got a lot for your money. We did the less popular Flores to Lombok route as opposed to Lombok to Flores. And what that meant was we basically had a huge ship to ourselves. So there was only one other couple on this ship that is usually transporting around 30 to 40 backpackers. So it was very chilled out, which was lovely. In between sort of the big stops, you just sort of sit on the top, watching the views go by in the bean bags. Food was okay, wasn't the best, but again, you're on a boat, so what do you expect? Um, but some of the activities we did were just surreal. Um, we sort of went to a pink beach, we saw Komodo dragons, we watched the sunrise over Padar Island. Um, we swam with sharks and turtles, unfortunately no manta rays, but there is usually, um, but yeah, it was amazing. And in first place, our favourite activity from the whole time in Southeast Asia, it's popular for a reason, it definitely lives up to the expectations, and that is the Ha Zhang Loop in Vietnam. We did the four day, three nights trip again. I recommend doing that rather than the three days because that extra day is still great. Um, again, it was slightly expensive, but worth the money. Yeah, I think it was around £200 um, per person, but like Megan said, well worth the money. It was, as you know, the best thing that we did during our nine months in Southeast Asia. And we've seen some amazing things, so definitely, you know, we don't take it lightly. The scenery was amazing. We both opted to have an easy driver, which if you aren't a confident driver, I highly recommend you doing that because some of the roads aren't the best and they do drive quickly as well. So if you aren't up for that, then just pay the extra, I think, £20 for an easy driver and then tip them. Yeah, make sure to give your driver a tip at the end. You know, they take great care of you. You know, they'll get you a bottle of water in the evening and strap your bags to the back and get you waterproofs if you need them. But yeah, we just both had the most amazing time doing the Hajang Loop and met some really great people as well. We booked ours through Buffalo Hostel um, just because we heard that the Jasmine Tours um, Hajang Loop trips are usually quite loud and boozy. boozy and stuff like that and we weren't really up for it whereas we had about 10 people in our group and that was really great because we got to spend some time with other like-minded people it was a bit more quiet but we still had fun and did some karaoke and drank some happy water and ate some really great, great food as yeah, well yeah the food was very good yeah we missed those um spring rolls the fried <laughs> spring rolls are oh, so good but yeah, we really hope you've enjoyed this video um, for, of us sort of telling you our top 25 travel experiences. Let us know if there's anything that you would add to this list from Southeast Asia that we've missed out. Um, we've, I think we've pretty much done a pretty good um, coverage through Southeast Asia and tried and done as many activities as we can. But let us know some of your favourite things. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.